This section of the course is about big ideas in physical geography, and one very important idea that you need to get to grips with is the idea of thresholds. You should have already encountered this concept in your reading in advance of this lecture, because David Gilvey's 1999 paper that you are asked to read previously talked about landscape stability, the sensitivity of geomorphic systems to disturbance, and the significance of geomorphic thresholds. I've also asked you to look at a short video from the second year geomorphology course, and in that you'll have seen me drawing a graph to illustrate how an event such as a landslide can occur when a boundary between stable and unstable conditions is crossed. That boundary is a threshold, and in the video you saw how the threshold could be crossed either as a result of long-term change such as surface slope weathering, or as a result of a sudden externally driven change such as a rainfall event. Thresholds are an important concept throughout physical geography, and the aim of today's lecture is to draw your attention to that concept and to encourage you to do some reading around it. The classic paper on thresholds that you need to know about is this one by Stanley Shum. This is a reference worth remembering, and you should be able to cite Shum as one of the key names in this area. You can find this paper online, I've put a link on the VLE, and we have a paper copy in the library, and you need to make sure that you understand his basic idea. This is a copy of the abstract of Shum's paper, and you'll see here the familiar story of a term being refined and redefined over time. What Shum does is clarify and crystallise a meaning for the term that is useful for geomorphology, and can be applied to geomorphological situations consistently by different researchers, to understand why things happen at specific times and specific locations in landscape. For example, to use Shum's classic case study, why do some hill slopes suffer from gully erosion while others don't? What's the boundary between the conditions that permit gullying and the conditions that prevent it? If the abstract doesn't immediately make sense, you'll find that reading the introductory pages of the paper itself clarifies what he's talking about, and I strongly recommend that you have a look at those pages. Shum defines thresholds as points where abrupt changes occur. For example, the point where a landslide occurs on a previously stable hill slope, or the point at which gully erosion is initiated. If the triggering factor is something progressive and internal to the system, he refers to an intrinsic threshold, and if the trigger is an external driver, then he refers to an extrinsic threshold. This diagram should remind you of the graph that you saw me draw in the previous video, the one from the second year geomorphology course. It shows a line marked 1 representing a valley floor of steadily increasing gradient over time, and therefore increasing instability over time, eventually reaching the critical threshold, line 2, of the maximum safe gradient, beyond which erosion or movement will occur. Superimposed on that steady trend towards the intrinsic threshold are short vertical lines representing individual storm events that temporarily increase the instability and could breach the extrinsic threshold. Take a moment to read the caption and make sure you understand this graph completely. The threshold can be crossed either by the eventual progress of the intrinsic change, or by the immediate effect of an external event. As time progresses, the system becomes increasingly sensitive to the effects of the extrinsic events. Flood events at the left-hand end of this diagram won't have the same effect as the same event occurring at the right-hand end. Shum used the example of gully erosion to illustrate his point, and it's worth doing a little reading about gully formation so that you can set his work in context, and so that you can demonstrate some background knowledge if you write about Shum's ideas in an essay or an exam. This is also the kind of topic where it's possible to do neat little undergraduate research projects, for example, your geography dissertation. This is one of the most important figures from Shum's paper. Each point represents one field location, and its position on the graph indicates the gradient, measured up the left-hand axis, and the catchment area supplying water to the site, on the bottom axis. The sites marked with black dots show signs of gully erosion. The other sites do not show any gullying. The diagonal black line marks the lowest position on the graph where any gullied sites occur. It seems that below that line, gullying doesn't happen, but that above the line, it can happen. The line is the threshold above which there is a threat of gullying. You can increase the risk of gullying at a site by increasing the gradient or by increasing the drainage area. Notice that not all of the sites above the line actually have gullying. So there are some ungullied sites where gullying could theoretically happen above the line. 
You might think of these as being more sensitive to any disturbance in the environment than those ungullied sites that are below the line, because you wouldn't expect the sites below the line to experience gullying given their gradient and basin area. Here's a simplified version of that diagram to highlight that point. We can identify a threshold beyond which a process is likely to occur. Sites where it has already occurred and sensitive sites where there's a particular risk of it occurring as well as stable sites below the threshold where the risk is lower. Now that's a very common kind of situation for physical geographers to be looking at, trying to predict where events or processes are likely to occur or what locations are especially sensitive to disturbance. This map shows a slightly different but related example where areas at high risk of soil erosion have been mapped out on the basis of a series of predictive factors known as the universal soil loss equation. The outcome is essentially a map showing sites that are beyond a critical threshold condition. Again, this is a kind of work that you could do for a dissertation project. Incidentally, if you're not already familiar with the universal soil loss equation, that's something else that you should go and do some independent reading around. Shum's paper goes beyond the basic points that I've covered here, and here's another example of what he says. See if you can work out what's going on here and refer to the paper for a proper explanation to check that you've understood it properly. This graph indicates an erosion threshold based on erosive power on the left-hand axis and resistive forces on the bottom axis. Once you get your eye in for these kinds of thresholds and how they work, you'll start seeing them throughout physical geography. Keep your eyes open for examples in your reading. For example, here's a nice straightforward case study that very clearly and directly reflects Shum's work. Take a look at this paper and make sure that you can see that link. You can use this paper as an illustration of the lasting impact and applicability of the original work. This second case study doesn't apply the original idea in quite such an obvious way, but it's typical of the many papers that you should be able to find that illustrate the same principle and demonstrate the pervasive influence of the big idea of thresholds in physical geography. It's important that you understand the basic concept of thresholds, that you know about the classic work by Shum, and that you can recognize the idea in more recent papers and in the physical geography world around you. That's what your independent reading and thinking this week should focus on.